<coughs> oh, please sit down. Cheers. Mr. Um... Kelso. Kelso. Oh, yes. Now, Mr. Kelso, I have your file in front of me, and it says you've been claiming benefit for 11 years. And in that time, you've never had any offer of employment. That's right, yeah. Also says your preferred occupation is poet. Mm hmm You see, this is why the DSS is reviewing your case, Mr. Kelso, because of this poet thing. It's an awful long time to be claiming benefit. Yeah. And you've kind of boxed yourself into a corner by saying you're a poet, because... I I'm a poet. Well, I'm, I'm not saying you're not a poet. I'm just saying that by being a poet, you've precluded yourself from other work. What do you want me to do about that? What kind of stuff do you write? What do you mean, what kind of stuff do I write? Well, I mean, you've never been published. Have you ever considered that might be a factor? What is it you're driving at here? That my stuff's not good enough? Is that what you're saying, my stuff's not good enough? Can I hear one of them? Right. Let me hear my notepad here. <clears throat> A distant smash ruled over by the drone of Danny's hammer. What's it called? Uh, the worker. It's <laughs> ironic, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> Nothing, go on. A distant smash ruled over by the drone of Danny's hammer, pounding squarely, callous thumbs, glazed eyes. Miles from home amidst an industry mayhem awaits the bell that tolls dinner. Cheese again. Well, that's garbage, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Well, it's mints. Well, it's hardly buns, is it? It's not meant to be buns. I've got one for you. Eleven years on a downward spiral. What's it called? Kelso's fate. Ha <laughs> ha! That's ironic, isn't it? No, it isn't. Eleven years on a downward spiral. Every Thursday, cash the gyro. DSS don't think it's funny. They decide to cut your money. All your work. Wrapped in a parcel. Get a job, you work shy asshole. What's that you're eating? Muesli. What's that plate of goodness you got there, Forty? Full fried breakfast, just like I have every morning. Full fried breakfast, eh? You're a braver man than me. Don't start about the dieting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're doing well, too, I must say. And I'm losing weight. You are, you are. I'm working on the premise, right? That you breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, supper like a papa. No. That's not the breakfast of a king. That's the breakfast of a crazy super king. With a big kingdom. Mm. <laughs> anyway, for the rest of the day, right, mm -hmm. I won't consume any more than 3,000 calories. What will you eat? Oxo cubes. You can eat as many as you like. You're going to stuff yourself with oxo cubes all day? How yeah. <laughs> many calories in them? 15 each. Ooh, you'll be beefy breath. Yeah, that's a downside, but there you go. No kissing for you. No. Yep. So are you going to do any calorie burning? Ah, well, you see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You can burn 1,000 calories, right, from one session of sex. Where'd you read that? Never mind where I read it, it's just a well-known fact. Come on, that's some statistic you picked up. Where'd you get it from? The hello. Right. What if you like me? Uh, what if you like me friends? See, me friends only last two or three minutes. Uh-huh. You know, do you burn, burn a thousand calories that way? No, two or three minutes means two or three calories. It's just the way it is. So you've got to be a 60-minute man to burn that thousand calories. Ah, uh, here's the thing. What if you can't have sex? Mmm, Viagra. Oh, Viagra. You'd lose a few pounds with that, eh? Yeah, you'd lose 80,000 calories in a night. What a session that would be. 20 stones down, eh? It'd be a skinny little thing with a big head, but you'd be a love machine. Right. Do you think you can overdose on Viagra? Mm, I don't know. I guess it'd be fairly easy to spot the guy in the morgue who had OD'd on Viagra. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You'd never be able to get the lid down in a coffin. You'd need to wipe the smile off the guy's face with a hammer. <laughs> <sighs> hey, I'm sorry I'm late. You're not late, you're early. Oh, hey. Right, well, I'll just wait outside and you can give me a shout and you're ready for don't, me. Don't, 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 don't be so silly. Come in and sit down. Right. Name? Hey, Ronald Villiers. Ronald Villiers. Who are you with? Hey, why'd he come and pump? Okay, <laughs> now, you know what we're doing here today, Ronald? Uh, 
Uh, yes, I think I've got a rough idea, yes. OK, yeah, we're doing a voice. I, I, you don't have to tell me. I've done my homework on this one now. It's a movie trailer voice. I've been practising the voice all weekend. Oh, great. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a movie trailer for an actioner. Oh, and it stars uh, movie. Patrick and Don Swayze. Don Swayze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've also got Brian Dennehy in it. He's the oh, cop. Brian Dennehy, aye. Yeah. 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 I've been told I, I look like a thinner version of Brian Dennehy. My sister said that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I could, uh, I can, uh, I could, uh, <clears throat> okay, just have a look here at the, uh, the monitor right. here, and you'll see the movie trailer that's going to come on there in a few seconds, right. and there'll be no sound to it, uh, you just supply the script there, it's just to give oh, you an idea how long right. the voiceover oh, has to right. be. Right, okay, then, okay. well, then it started, look. Yeah, yeah, okay, there you'll see, uh, the brothers coming out of the prison oh, at State Pen. There's Brian coming out of the precinct. Oh, aye, aye. There's like a train me. crash. Like there, huh? yeah, there's the bar fight. Mm. There's Brian again oh, on the rooftop. Right, uh -huh. Then we do a couple of seconds on the bomb. A oh, oh. little bit of a car chase. Yeah, oh. Car turns over. Nah. Titles. Oh, that looks fabulous, that. What a job you've done. I'd like to see that myself. <laughs> you ready to have a go at it, uh, Donald? Oh, hey, hey, Ronald. Villiers. Sure. Right, yeah. yes, yeah. I am. Uh -huh. OK. OK. okay. Off you go. Jack Kincaid is whoa, 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 just, just let the numbers count down right, there, right. OK? Just three. Jack, Jack, Kinc Jack Kincaid is having a very bad day and is about to get a whole lot worse. OK, hold on there, hold on. Have you uh, ever <clears throat> seen a movie trailer before? Oh, of course I have, yes. OK, it's just we need the voice to be a little grittier. Right, grittier. You know, a little more sort right. of gruff. I'm good at gruff and gritty, yes. Are you? Oh, I, yeah? oh I've done that. OK, right. you want to have another go? Sure. OK, mm -hmm. all right. Jack Kincaid is having a very bad day. Whoop. Well, hold on, mate. Just give me that script there for a second. Don't you worry. You want a glass of water or something? I'm all right. OK, right. Now, listen to this. Jack Kincaid is having a very bad day. Yeah? <sighs> I thought you are brilliant. Ah, that. you know that. That's very <laughs> right. OK, ready to go? OK. Off you go. Right. Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Deeper. But Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Deeper. Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Deeper. Jack Kincaid is having a... Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. day. Jack Kincaid. Thanks, Donald. Yes, we the best guy move on. Alright. Oh, yeah. Alright, take it away, Charlie! Alright, Charlie! That's me, mate. Thank Where are we? What happened? Gentlemen, you were in a shipyard accident. You've both been in a coma for over 40 years. We've both been in a coma? But we're all right, eh? Well, bizarrely, you seem OK. Mm. We're all right. Well, we're all right, we're thinking of ourselves, eh? Right, get my boots! Well put, Willie, I'm joking for a jar! Mm. Oh, thank you. Uh, did you clock the hoo? Oh, hey! Find Bob for a shot in the swings there, sweetheart! Crossups! Ooh! That's a fine way for a young bird to be talking, isn't it? Aye! Right! Pines! Right. Right. <laughs> Here you. Oh. What have you got in your horn? Have you been stealing money Snickers out of that kitchenette again? No. Well, open your horn. I'm going up the stair. No, you're no going up the stair. I have tried with you, son. I really have tried with you. What is it you want? Is it a visit to the big house you want? The big house for the wee windies, is it? No stolen anything. Well, that's what they all say, eh? That's what they all say in the big house, when they get the chance to talk in between the buggerns and all the rest of it. <laughs> Open your horn. No. Do you want me to lift that phone up? Is that what you want me to do? You want me to phone the busies and drag you right down the cop shop right now? You'll not be able to walk. I'm not going to the big house. I've not stolen anything. Oi! Don't give me any of cheek. Is that what you're doing? You answer me back. If you have any idea what happens to boys, I answer their dad back. Go to the big house. That's right, they end up in the jug, the clinker, the slammer, Shawshank without the redemption. Oh, aye, and I suppose you'll be off out tonight and all, eh? Aye. Aye, out with your big Mick Baker pals to tear the tune up. No, it's school prize given. I won the English prize. You won the English prize? Oh, son. Oh, they think a son of mine could win the English prize. I'm not proud. It's nothing, da. It makes it all the more unbearable to think of you lying in some urinal somewhere, bare ass naked with the blood running out of you. Is that everything for you, madam? That's everything, yes. That's the people's friend and 20 Peter Stuyvesant. 
No Caesar today, then? Sorry? You're not buying dog food today? You usually buy dog food on a Tuesday. Oh, yes, well, I'm afraid I won't be buying dog food anymore. Oh, why is that? Because little Binky passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Were you very fond of little Binky? Oh, I was. What kind of dog was he? A Scottish terrier. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Scottish terrier. I wish I had a wee Scottish terrier in here sometimes to keep me company. I'm in here on my own, you know, every day, day after day after day. But <laughs> who's Binky all you had in the world then? Well, no. Actually, I have three sons. Oh, they come round and visit me regularly with my grandchildren. Oh, so are they coming round today then? Uh, not today, no. So you can be all on your lonesome, eh? Huh, listen, here's an idea. Why don't I just shut the shop for a couple hours, eh? I'll, I'll get some numbari and some milks and some French francis, a couple of individual trifles, and I'll, I'll come round to yours and we'll make a day of it, eh? We'll have, we'll have tea and cakes. What about that, then? And we could chat and you could show me some pictures of your grandkids. What do you think? I forgot. My sons are coming round this evening. Oh, well, that's even better. I could meet them. May I just pay for my shopping, please? Uh, yes, certainly. That's £3.65, please. There you are. Hey, but where about your change? Keep the change. <laughs> your sons will stop coming round one day, you know. <laughs> having too much fun to visit old mum. I'll still be here. <laughs> I can hear a scabby-headed crew. I can hear farmer's ass poking through a hedge. Whoa! I'm not eating that, but... What is that? A walloper? <laughs> <laughs> can you get a wallop of supper, eh? Right? Here, I'm a squatch of that. Pizza. Oh, you're charging for a pizza now. Yeah, I thought pizzas were for free. Maybe they've got a fancy pizza pot out the back. Ah! <laughs> Who's for? Two bottles of iron brew. What? A single. We're not going deep sea diving. Aye, uh, who do you think we are? Hans and Laurie Hass. <laughs> oh, <coughs> Mrs. Devlin. Uh, you're Tommy. Billy. Jimmy. I'm Mark. Mark, that's right. How are you, Mark? I'm, I'm fine. How's yourself? Oh, I'm gallus. Now, is it the fuller can you're wanting, a crystal ball reading, or you can have the skull? A skull? What, what's that? You you read my skull? No, I've got a skull. A rather special skull. Oh, well, I, I'll go for the skull, eh? Skull's too bad extra. All right, what's that? Ten? Aye, that'll do. Right, if you just want to sit back, relax, then I shall reveal the skull. <sighs> there you are. This is the skull of the Marquis de Sade. What? The Marquis de Sade. Young fella, you know. Invented sadism. I was a bad man. You can read the future a lot better for the skull of a bastard than you can for a good guy. <laughs> Ken Nina Shepherd does a Gallagate. She's got a skull of Pol Pot. She's booked up to July. Mind you, she's just got it in for Cambodia, so it's still needing bailed to get all the muck off it. Bailed? Ah, you've got to bail it to get the hair and the ears and the eyes off. It's a manky job. Right. See you in the initial aim. That'll be me, Mark. Oh, well, we're after a good start. I'm seeing a garden, the wains in it, and a man cooking, like, cooking outside, you know? Oh, you mean like a barbecue? That's right, like a barbecue. What do you want me to say? I don't know. Barbecue. I've never been to a barbecue. Right, well, you'll be going to one soon. I uh, see the name Mary. No, I don't know anybody called Mary. Margaret? Yep. Maybe, no, it's Maisie. Or maybe it's Irene. No. Elizabeth? No. Zoe? Heather? No. Right, I see a man with big, dirty horns. Working horns. Your dad, maybe? No, no, but my dad. My dad's a chartered accountant. With dirty horns? No. Right. Seeing a blue car. I don't know anybody with a blue car. How about Sheena? Jenny? Anne-Marie? No. Right, Linda? Andrea? Heather? No. You said Heather already. Is there a Heather? No. Right. Um, that, that, that surely can't be the, the skull of the marquee de Sade. How? <laughs> to me. Ah, but this is the skull of the Marquis de Sade when he was a wee boy. 
What? <laughs> well, we are darling. All right, but listen, don't go to any trouble, sweetheart. All right, we'll wait for the nail bar, bar. No. Come on, I'll give you a shampoo anyway. No, 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 no. No ice. I washed mine this month. Can you not smell the carbolic? I the only time I've ever got my heat in the sink is when I'm spewing up my ring. Well, I think you would feel the benefit for it. Well, it doesn't matter, because here's the male hairdresser. Now, hiya, Kevin. Hiya. Oh, just what I love. A pair of blank canvases screaming out for a makeover. Eh, uh, if it's all the same with yourself, Kevin, we've, uh, we've changed our minds. Uh, this place seems a wee bit overpricey for us anyway. Oh, come on. I remember for that price, not only does Kevin cut your hair, but I get you a blow dry as well. Well, that fact now. <laughs> so, the blow dry is included in the price. Match, rubber. That sounds real. One will get fired in amongst that. Aye, as long as that boy Kevin isn't dishing out the blow dry. <laughs> now it's time to rejoin Joan at the Janandra B and B as the holiday season approaches and tensions mount in Largs Uncovered. It's 9 a.m. Joan makes everything shipshape for the arrival of the B and B's new guests. Well, I've got three rooms completely booked out for the weekend. Quite relieved about that. It's the first weekend of the season. I've got uh, Mr. Dorsey and his niece. Um, they've been coming here every year for the last two years this year. Uh, an elderly couple, Mr. and Mrs. Carson. They're, uh, they've been coming here every year for, oh, even since the previous owners were running it. And uh, I've got the blind fella, Jim. He's just lost his mother, so I've moved him into a single. It's, uh, he lives here all year round. Pussy, pussy, pussy. Oh, excuse me. The towels are folded, the sheets are washed, and the Carsons arrive. Joan is a big believer in public relations and always greets the guests at the door. Oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Carson. Nice to see you again. Hey. Uh, you're both looking well. Hey. Key. Uh, yeah, right, there's your key, Will. Enjoy your stay. Joan is uptight, as her husband Andrew has been drinking and is monopolising the living room. Well, I'm actually a bit uptight. It's my husband Andrew. Been drinking again. He's monopolising that living room. He's <laughs> watching stars in her eyes. My husband doesn't always drink. Just in the holiday season. Oh no! You like <laughs> bossy! It's his idea to open my B and B, but after the first year, I couldn't get my left a finger. Excuse me. Why is it, Mister Dorsey? Oh right, yes. Um, um, my niece is having a nap at the moment. I was just wondering if it was all right to come down and watch some television. Uh, Andrew's in there, Mister Dorsey. Oh right, I'll uh, I'll just leave it. Thanks. Just go back upstairs. Tell me, will you be changing the sheets in the morning? Oh, Dorsey! I know what you're up to with that niece! Eh? Who comes here being baby a 22-year-old niece? You dirty clotty gay! Shut it, Andy! Ugh! The following morning, the house is quiet. Andrew works off his hangover by preparing the breakfast. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> While Joan seats the guests. Right, come on now, Jim. Blind or no, you can. You've to be done here for quarter to six. Sorry, Joan. <laughs> it's my new room. Couldn't find my cupboard to get my clays. Oh, I'll let you off at this time. At least you've cleaned your teeth. <sighs> right, Mr and Mrs Carson, is it the full breakfast you've Full? Oh, Joan! Where's that Dorsey pervert? For God's sake, Andrew, will you leave it? Dorsey, you filthy shagger! Get off the bones you can do here for your breakfast, or it's gone in a bin! It's 11 a.m. Mr. Dorsey and his niece have yet to surface, and Andrew's been drinking. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> Dorsey! Open this door! Are you taking the bus? Dorsey! Out of the way, I'm putting this in! <coughs> oh, Tragedy has struck. Both Mr. Dorsey and his niece lie dead. Joan is upset. Oh, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. <laughs> Booked him for a week. <laughs> <laughs> when you're older, wouldn't it be nice to have a permanent income to rely on, even although you haven't organised a personal pension? Well, with Home Free, you can have all the benefits of a personal pension without any of the planning. If you own the house you live in, and the house is worth £70,000 or more, and you have little or no mortgage to speak of, then Home Free will release part or indeed all of the equity in your property, giving you a carefree pension to spend on whatever you want, whenever you want, and live in the house for the rest of your life. There's no difficult forms to fill in. 
and no salesman's going to call. Here's how it works. If you live to, say, the ripe old age of 95, then you have us humped. But if you should get sick before then, which will probably happen, then Home Free will do their utmost to snatch your property from underneath you and then forget all about your sad old wrinkly arse. <laughs> home Free, where hopefully we can get your home for free. <laughs> OK, Betty, let's go past the ward now to the time of rationing. Tell me, what are your memories? Well, it was a good time to be living. We felt we'd come out of a bad period, you know, a dark period. Everybody was happy, even though there was rationing. Must have been very hard for you to try and feed and clothe your family and indeed keep them all together. Tell me, how many children did you have? Eleven. Nine by different fathers and two by my Charlie. <laughs> uh, yes, quite, but you, you did manage to get food on the table. I well, I just sell my ration book because me and my pal Rose could get as much meat and stuff as we wanted. From the black market? No, out the shops. Now, take Cochrane's, for example. See, I used to get cheese out of Cochrane's. And in them days, cheese came in big, huge chunks, like the size of a puffy. Uh, and with your ration book, you were only allowed two ounces. But I came to an arrangement with a man that worked in the shop. He says to me, if I went in the back and wrapped him and, and let him rattle me in the big cheese, I could take him as much as I could claw. T tell us about the bananas. Oh, never, never mind the bananas. Well, there was the butchers, you know. I was a young lad worked in the butchers, so he was a good ten years younger than me. He just looked like a boy. My, what a size. He could have hung a duffel coat on it with two bottles of iron brew in the pockets. <laughs> Please. Sometimes I was in there for hours. Oh, what a boy. One day I even come up the road without the meat. Just plain forgot. Uh, now, your husband Charlie was home, home to his family. Tell us what it was like to have him back. Oh, it was garbage. Six years he'd been away and that was him back under my feet making a nuisance himself. See, he was bad me after what the Japs had done to him. Wish the Japs had kept him. The bamboo, the bamboo, he used to shout out during the night. He was bedridden for a year. Oh, that's terrible. Aye, it was, cos it meant if I wanted a plunge, I couldn't use the bed. I had to go outside and use the shed. Charlie, did you get the stuff? Oh, wouldn't you like to know Jimmy boy? Come on, Charlie, did you get the stuff? Aye, I go to us in the bag. What's this? I told you to get the stuff! And I did! I got the stuff! This is the supermarket's own brand ravioli. I only like the good gear. I only like the butoni gear. Oh, the butoni gear! That's right, the decent ravioli. The nice Italian canned ravioli. No, that's pish. That's my ravioli. Don't you slag my ravioli. Don't ever slag my ravioli. If you check the bag properly, Jimmy, you'll find your own precious ravioli. What? Underneath the tin peaches, Jimmy. Well, that's all right, then! Here, Jack, you want to hang fire and I'll go first. Ah, uh, OK, I don't mind. I'll stand and wait here. Are you sure now? Cos uh, I don't mind waiting if you want to go first, you know. Oh, that's all right. Give yourself peace. I'll just stand here. Away you go. Well, it's just there might be a wee while, you see. I've got to ask about my super Anne. Uh, well, that's what to do. Away you go. For I'll goodness wait. sake, will one of you make up your mind? There's a queue here. Hey. Oh, hmm. my, so there is. Uh, it was quiet a minute ago. Well, away you got, Victor, on you go. You sure now, Jack? I am all right. I'll wait here. I don't let her rush you, by the way. Mm. Well, there, Barry. How's your cell, eh? Not bad, Mr McDade. How are you? Aye, no bad, no bad. Wee bit chesty there, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You're awfully brown, Nels. Aren't you back your holidays? Aye. Tenerife. For goodness sake. Oh, Tenerife, eh? Oh, What's the matter with you? About years some of us are in a hurry. Aye, well, some of us, aren't they? You want to calm your jets? My pal's only up there doing a wee bit of bank business. It is a bank, for Tenerife. God's sake. Oh, oh, aye. A wee bit of dancing and all that. A couple of pints. Aye, I was there, eh? Twenty-odd years ago, before that big crash, you know? Now, the other thing I want to ask you about is uh, a money order to Canada, you see, because my grand Wayne, he's 12 now, you know, and, uh, oh, he's an office size. You want to see the size here, you know. Well, I'm going to send him a wee bit of money there. This is ridiculous. Oh, Why don't you button your lip? Absolutely. It's not our fault there's only one bloody teller on, eh? 
What's the matter, Jack? Oh, I'm telling this woman it's not her fault that there's only one teller on. I've got a right nippy sweetie here. Now, the other thing as well is a standing order, you see, for my home help. Uh, I, want I wish to, to make that. a complaint here. Uh, aye, so do I, but the bloody cheek this one's gain me. <laughs> this pensioner's caught for it all the time, so we do, eh? Cos we take a wee bit longer to complete our transactions, eh? We've got to take a lot of tripe after high and mighty types like you. Well, I've had enough, it stops right here. Shut your trap and stop your bleating, you sow. That's me now, Jack. Oh, smashing all. That's great. Hello. No. This is in ones and twos. I've not put them in bags or anything like that. I've not counted it. Ah, you can't even eat Saturday the fat man, eh? Swaying about the terraces, firing into a few pale ales and then pushing under the car. I am not wrong. Ah, that's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? What a bit. Yeah, we see murder. Where's your charger? Sorry, lads. I'm going to have to confiscate that drink. What? Hold on. We'll scalp them. Ah, let me think now. Ooh, eight cans. I'll take us two minutes. And before we go any further, may I remind you that drinking in public is also illegal. What? Right, Elliot is. Take the baby. Aye, take it. And away you get his to watch the rest of the game. Come on, Nanova! Come on, Nanova! As is brandishing an offensive weapon in football grounds. What? You be telling us next we can't even sing a sash? Can we still cheer the kick off, eh? If you've got a ticket. What? Ticket for the football? It's no the trivia we're going to see. And then you're telling me you're going to my ticket to go to see the football on a Saturday. Aye, and I'll not do you any good today. How's that? Because Saturday's game kicks off Monday evening, 7.45. What? <laughs> Another show. Another end of show pair of jumpers. And I can't help but notice, Forty, that uh, a calm has befallen the flat. The cat seems to have stopped scratching. Oh, well, there's a reason for that. You buy it a scratching post? No, no. Some mooks might have bought it a scratching post, mm -hmm. but I thought, no. What? Scratch cards. Oh, genius, genius. Yeah. Scratch I mean, cards? Well, that's the most useful thing a cat could do for you, scratch your little scratch cards for you. Oh, man, that saves you the bother of going into your pocket to get the pound out. Well, exactly, because pounds sometimes don't work. Sometimes you've got to get the one pence or the two pence, and it's a real hassle, so I thought, let the cat do it. So you've killed two cats with one card. Exactly, but <sighs> there's a downside. What's that? Well, sometimes it scratches off the wee void box as well. There's another downside. What? There's some money missing out of my wallet. You blaming me? No, fella. My wallet's your wallet. Right. I think the cat is nipping in with its little paw to my wallet and nipping down to the shop to get scratch cards. Are you suggesting this cat's got a scratch card habit? I'm suggesting that cat is addicted to scratch cards. <laughs> Tenor. <laughs> Good night. Godspeed. Here. You seen that tune of fat part? Oh man, can't you go that part of man? What is this part of part of part of total part of? That's what it is, but man, just part of part of. <laughs> These are handy things, easy. Aye, ah, when she's finished, Gina's were blow dry. She can come up here and wash the clabber off her bunnets. <laughs> Have you ever seen your granny making water down by the old mill stream? She pushes for an hour and a quarter, and you can't see her ass for steam. <laughs> 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 